Hey guys and welcome back. It's great to have you along today. For those of you who are new here, my name's Anita and I'm a flower farmer florist. I'm based in the little town of Maud, Victoria, Australia. And I live on three acres with my family and I'm currently farming around three quarters of an acre of flowers. I grow a mix of perennials and annuals and I specialise in David Austin roses. This year in particular, being my second season of flower farming, I decided to trial dahlias on a larger scale and I'm really loving it. If you've been following my channel for a while, you'll know that uh, we had some recent flooding and we're still recovering from that. And most of our crops are probably about two months behind. And this is my little flower farm here. Look at the size of this worm. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so as you just saw, we have quite a few animals here at our farm as well. We have four pigs. We have a livestock guardian dog called Sadie and also a Kelpie cross called Pip. I thought today I'd just give you a quick update on where things are at with the flower field and some of the events that we've been doing over the past month. We've had a couple of weddings and you'll get to see these flowers here come together. Very unique and different. I've never done anything like this one before. And this was an engagement party. And also you'll get to see our very first flower subscription program come together, which has been lots of fun. In amongst all that, of course, I have the flower stand going and we have flowers on that daily at the moment. And I also take orders all week long. So it's been a nice busy month. Oh my gosh, I just stood in pig poo. Uh oh. That's not sounding good. Okay, so this is my very elaborate setup for harvesting. <laughs> and it's always an interesting ride back up to the house to make up bouquets because there's not a lot of leg room left. <laughs> it's all right though, it does the job and I haven't crashed yet. <laughs> We're finding a lot of little frogs around the place at the moment since we've had so much rain from the flood. And this little guy was just on the hose. Look at him hanging on for dear life. Oh, I feel you, buddy. I feel you. Whew, it's a warm one today. It's going to get to about 36 degrees here today, which isn't the hottest we have it here in Australia, but it is a pretty warm one. It's probably one of the warmest ones we've had yet this season. So Sadie's over there. She's very hot. <laughs> We all are, but I wanted to show you because the other day I had the big windstorm come through and it blew over um, the shelving. So I've got that sorted again and fixed, but I did have to plant out some of the dahlias because uh, the roots had been exposed and I just made a decision that they needed to go in the ground ASAP. So not ideal for this sort of weather. Uh, but I did have to plant them out. So in comes my neighbour to the rescue. <laughs> he actually had some of this shade cloth and just threw it over the fence for me and said, do you want this? And I said, yes, please. It is the perfect length. I couldn't have even measured this better myself to go over all these new dahlias. Now, I'm just really doing this because it has been really hot very suddenly and we have had no opportunity for these plants to really harden off and get used to the weather. Um, they're just thrown into the deep end literally. So we're going to cover them today and just they've been watered so um, we'll try and protect them a little bit and see how they go. 36 degrees outside let's have a look at the and I've just stepped into the polytunnel let's have a look at how hot it is on the thermometer. It's saying 44 degrees so that's probably going to get hotter throughout the day. Whew. Stinking hot in here these poor plants. Um, so it's gonna be really important. I keep coming back throughout the day and just giving them a quick little squirt just to cool them down again and create that air conditioning sort of effect. Um, but it's very uncomfortable. I've swallowed a fly. I've got sweat dripping down the back of my back. It's 
stuff. So I've just found this three-headed Cosmos. It's one of those um, cupcake Cosmoses that is in the blush color. It's got three heads. Um, I want to show you something interesting on the stem because you see it's almost like a double stem as well. It's super thick. Okay, so this is sort of a normal size stem. And that is the weirdo stem. Look how chunky that is. Big difference. Gotta love it when you get a weirdo in your plant selection. Always adds a bit of extra flavor to the mix. Nice view of Sadie's butt there. Um, <laughs> I wanted to show you uh, just one thing I do with my Cosmos. This, uh, I have a lot of people asking me about pinching out Cosmos and all sorts of flowers. I do do it with most of my blooms. Now that's because I'm a flower farmer. You don't have to. Hello girl. Um, but you don't have to, but I, I do do it specifically with flowers like this and I'll show you. It's really not doing much. It's just got one sort of flower on it compared to the rest behind me that are so much bigger and branching off. So what I, what I do with these is you can see where it forks down here and the flower starts. You can trim it off there and usually just pinch it off is fine. If you wanted, you could actually go a little bit uh, further down the branch than that because there's another forking a, a little bit further down. Um, up to you. Um, either way, it's going to make a difference and you've got the side branches there now that will shoot off. So uh, it is worth it for things like that if you want to get a little bit uh, more performance out of your Cosmos. Okay, guys, so you can do it with zinnias too and I do recommend doing it with zinnias and especially... Um, cosmos as well because you do get that lush growth that comes out at the laterals so you can see here i'm going to try and get in here and show you uh you can see here we've got that that fork there so you could go lower because there's another set down here where you could do it and you've still got more bush coming off those that main stalk so if you don't um pinch out your zinnias and cosmos immediately while they're young while they're just little babies it doesn't matter because you can do it throughout the life of the plant and as you harvest these beautiful blooms um, what happens is you automatically are pretty much pinching out at the same time so these sort of plants are designed to um, bush back out so you'll you will get it at some point hi sadie Look what I've got, David Austin's for a wedding. <laughs> well, actually two weddings. And I thought I'd bring you along and just show you how I prepare for these weddings. These two in particular are new to me because they are the first customers who are purchasing my DIY wedding buckets. Now these wedding buckets are designed for you to be able to uh, do your own bouquets and wedding decorations. What they include are greenery. So I've put in this one blue gum and feverfew, which is like a German chamomile. Um, I've got beautiful uh, Queen Anne's lace, carrot tops, um, Ami Magis and David Austin's of course, Cosmos and my hot biscuits amaranth. Uh, now I also have a few other roses that uh, I don't grow and I had to purchase from the wholesaler. So I'll show you those as well once I've put these together. The other wedding I'm doing is a little bit different. It's utilizing fake flowers. Okay, so let's head off to the wholesaler. You're gonna get to see a whole lot of blooms that I don't grow. These are flowers that are, just don't make sense to me to grow in my climate and in my situation. I'm only small scale and I cannot grow everything. And of course, we have clients that have specific requests for flowers that they want in their function or wedding or whatever uh, we have to be able to facilitate that so this is where we utilize the flower wholesaler
Okay, so here's what I've got from the wholesaler. A few bright pinks, blues, and some soft white filler. You'll see that pink stuff there, that's called Celosia. Huge, big, giant delphiniums, uh, lysianthus, beautiful dusty pink roses, some bright pink dahlias, and of course we've got some lovely little snaps there, and straw flowers. And here we go guys, here's the finished product. These are the two DIY wedding buckets. And the theme for these guys, what they wanted was pinks and they wanted lots of really beautiful old world roses. So you can see I've chosen lots of beautiful David Austens and fillers that are very dainty. So now I've got that done, I can move into getting bouquets made for our subscription flowers. Look at that look of concentration there. <laughs> And here we go, here's the finished product, all ready to go to their new homes. Okay, so now it's time to head into some wedding flower preparation. These are the synthetic flowers that I am spray painting. Now the reason I'm spray painting these synthetic flowers is because we couldn't actually find a synthetic flower that was the exact colour match. So you can see here I'm actually spray painting white lysianthus. These ones are live and they held up really well to being spray painted. The bride and groom chose these colours because they were getting married by the ocean so it kind of reflects a beach theme and they also wanted to be able to dry their bouquet afterwards and keep it as a keepsake. So I chose things from the flower fields such as sea holly, lemon balm and raspberry leaf and there were a few berries on that raspberry leaf as well which gave it a really pretty touch. I also put together these little jars and they were just to be dotted around on the tables where the food and the drinks were going to be. And of course we can't forget the men folk. Here's the guys buttonholes. Well guys, here they are. <laughs> All ready to go to their new homes. And I just want to say a huge thank you to you for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I hope you'll come back again next time and join me. Until then, take care and I'll see you again real soon. Bye.